Hey, how's it going everyone? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number 20. Now, of course, as you already know, this is finals week, so good luck with that. Uh, obviously, what I want you to do is study hard and, and kind of get yourself prepared. Uh, but I also want to go ahead and share something with you, something you can uh, do in Pro Tools. It's actually a really great technique. It's used in a lot of modern music, so go ahead and fire up your Pro Tools and we'll get started. Alright guys, so hopefully you have a Pro Tools session pulled up. Now if you don't have a Pro Tools session brought up, don't worry about it. Take plenty of notes and of course apply this information as soon as you get the chance. So what we're going to learn today is how to uh, sidechain a, a kick drum to a lead to create a really great uh, you know, kind of pumping sound. It actually works really great in electronic music. It's very simple to do and uh, yeah, the results are awesome. So let's go ahead and get to it. All we're going to do right now is bring up our mix window, Command Plus. Okay, cool. So. Uh, let's go ahead and hear how this sounds. It has absolutely no compression whatsoever. It's going to sound a little flat, a little boring. Uh, but then we're going to go ahead and change that. Now, just a quick little note about uh, you know compressors and this particular technique. What it does is it kind of cuts in and out volume in a sound. So if you have a kind of like a lead sound or a pad sound or something like that, that sounds you know just one dynamic. It's this one dynamic the whole way through. You can change that and kind of give it a pulsating effect. So let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. Uh, without this effect, and then we'll go ahead and add this effect, real simple. So it's kind of boring, uh, it's not really going anywhere, uh, but let's go ahead and change that. Let's uh, begin uh, by adding a compressor to our lead sound, okay? So actually I didn't name this track lead, let me go ahead and just name it lead. And actually, I'll name it lead chain since I'm going to be adding a you know, chain effect to it later. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my instrument and go to my inserts, go to multi-channel plugin, dynamics, and of course, I'm going to add a compressor. Okay, so by now we're pretty familiar how this compressor looks like. Uh, right now, it's not going to be really doing too much, not until we assign our uh, kick to our input and then to our side chain. Okay, and it's actually really, really simple. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're going to leave this alone. Okay, that actually simplifies things. Just move this to the side and move on to our next step. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our kick now, kick chain, and go to our scent area, okay, where we're going to be sending a signal from our kick to our key input to our side chain, creating this effect. Really, really simple. Uh, go to our send, our first empty one. I'm going to go to bus. Okay, and I'm going to select the first available bus needed for the track, and it's a mono track, so I'm going to go to bus number five is the first available one. I don't need a, you know, stereo one, so just bus five, and it really depends on what type of instrument you have. If it's a stereo instrument, you want to go to the first available stereo, in this case, just a mono. Nice, and now we have this fader right here. Okay, and what this fader is going to do is going to say, okay, how much of this sound is going to be sent over to this compressor over here. For right now, absolutely none. Uh, again, we're going to simplify things and not even touch that just yet. We're going to go ahead and use this in just a second. Now the next thing that you need to do is since we sent something from bus number five, we want to go ahead and receive that in our key input. So we're going to go ahead and open up our bus and guess one, which one we're going to pick. We're going to choose bus number five. Really, really simple. So all the hard work is already done. So if, if you're able to follow that, you're able to do this every single time. It's really simple. Uh, now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and go to where it says side chain. Okay, because we're that's what we're doing. We're side chaining this signal to this compressor. Okay. Let me go ahead and hit that key. And now when I hit play, guess what? There's not going to be any change yet, and that's because I haven't moved this fader. The moment I move this fader you'll notice that the graphic will change and you'll see uh, kind of like a dot appear. Usually it's either white or red. And uh, and then we'll begin adjusting all these parameters to kind of give it a, a, better, a better vibe. And then we're done. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and hit play. So 
So as you can see, the graphic change, you can kind of hear a slight difference, but we want to go ahead and adjust the parameters. What I would say is uh, one of the best things to do is to mess with the ratio. I like to keep a higher ratio because then you could really dramatically hear uh, that effect. Uh, so let me go ahead and hit play and you'll notice it. And then I'll adjust the knee and the threshold and uh, the attack is another thing that really uh, helps us stand out a bit more too. Okay, so I, I like it uh, the way it sounds right there. It sounds uh, sounds good. So let's go ahead and bring up the other elements to the song, and then uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you see how adding that just a very simple side compression really changed it, the way that the entire song sounded. It kind of gave it more of a you know throbbing kind of pumping sound. It sounded really uh, nice, and yeah, that's pretty much how to do it. It actually very few steps, about four of them, maybe five. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys put this to use, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later. All right, guys, that's all the information that I have for you today. But of course, it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay? Now if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process, uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. Our staff is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% hiring success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.